Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Um, we have got quite the development going on down at the southern border. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. It's not good. OK, there's lots of not good things happening at the southern border uh, that I want to get into here in a moment. And Joe Biden planning to just completely eliminate gas powered vehicles from the market. Um, things are going great, guys. But uh, first, I want to get into this this Venezuelan national who is going viral all over social media after posting a TikTok video encouraging illegal immigrants to come to America invade our homes and seize them by taking advantage of squatters' rights. Watch this. Let me translate for those on the audio podcast. I've thought about squatting in a house in the United States since I found out that there is a law that says that if a house is not occupied, we can seize it. Guys, here in the United States, the squatter's law is also in effect. And I think that this will be my next business. Squatting in abandoned houses. I already got some cheat codes from my African friends. And they told me that they have already seized about seven houses. And as the saying goes, Papi, you have to look for the hustle. And the hustle right now is to squat in houses. I just, I mean, you have to watch this. And how can you not just be so utterly embarrassed at the state of this country, you have illegal immigrants. I'm sorry, we're supposed to call them newcomers, right? If you're the Biden administration, you're like, ah, no, they're newcomers. No, illegals coming through our wide open borders and not only being fist bumped by Border Patrol, but being handed a debit card, a phone, a plane ride to their destination of choice, uh, uh, seizing homes, apparently. And these people are going on social media bragging about how they game our system to encourage more people to come in through our wide open borders, get the fist bump, get the debit card, get the phone, get the plane ride. The cycle continues. Of course, who could blame them? Where are they getting any sort of message that they shouldn't exploit our system? Our entire society, it seems, is being redesigned to empower the bad guys. And you may be thinking, well, I, maybe this guy and his African friends are wrong. This is America, after all. We have property rights in this country. Surely they are not coming in and really invading people's property and taking it from. Surely borders matter when it comes to people's homes and properties. Surely that's where we draw the line when we're talking about borders. Well, no, actually, you'd be wrong. Squatters rights is a thing now in progressive places like New York, where it turns out there are actually a lot of opportunities to be squatters because their liberal hellhole policies are leaving people unable to afford anything, let alone homes. So I want you to uh, to watch this when we're talking about uh, the the squatters rights now here in America, the complete disregard for any sort of borders, it seems, uh, you know, including borders in homes. Let's ask Adele Andalaro of New York City, a woman who was trying to sell the million dollar home that she owned and inherited from her parents. Uh, let's let's just see what happens in New York when you try to get your property back from someone illegally occupying it. I have video of you. Oh my God. Who are these people? Figure out the situation. Yeah, but they're in my house, man. Relax. No, 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 no. This to understand how this day ended. We need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests. We have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process this of is... selling it. No, he loved it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6 and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that 30 someone days. does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping oh up gosh. our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? I'm not renting 
Why are you here? She unlocked the front door, saw our cameras, and took off. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. Adele and her daughter, Unlocked with the, the property door. deed in hand, went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. There's a man sleeping right there. Oh Get out gosh. of my house. She found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved in about two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmiths. I didn't come in illegally. Imagine the that. door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors. A squatter and calling for the police on a homeowner. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for more than 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Well, how nice. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm Thanks, not NYPD. Out. This house is empty. This is my home. My locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. It's not fair that I, as the homeowner, should be having to go through this. How are you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith showed up. But police gave her a warning before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up mm -mm -mm. here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. Imagine. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door. Broke That's through breaking myself and, and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he oh did. did and so did you. Yeah. You broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police. This is unbelievable. Her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. We need to go to court. They consider this a landlord tenant issue. And by law, it has to be handled through the housing court, not with police. If you own this house, you would not want I her inside. Own the house. I don't own this house. Exactly, yes. she does. Yes, but then once again, you should know how the law works. I and do know how it there's, works. There's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. He says he signed a lease in October, but wouldn't tell us with who. I got proof longer than that. Show us the proof. But who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Stay in with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you I'll don't want to show, show it. Cool. Come here, brother. I like that. I would, oh I would like my to gosh. see it. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is a bill. Is a bill seems for like a work stand -up he says guy. he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. Just bills. So, Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, uh, for being, in, my, house, for being in my own home. And, it's not, it's not and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Arrested for unlawful eviction. She changed the locks on a man who claims mm -hmm. he lives mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how does this all end then? When do you leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money and I'll leave, or send me to court and we deal with the judge in court. It's that simple. I wish that I could sit here and say that it's just New York City that this is happening, um, but it's not. These rights of people illegally occupying someone else's property are popping up all across the country at the same time that we clearly don't know what a border is down at our southern border of our, our, our whole country. We have gone so far off the reservation and strayed so far from the entire reason this country was founded. Fifth Amendment, ring a bell for anyone? No, not in New York City, apparently. I don't know. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. That looked a little bit like public use. Just, just a little bit. I'm talking about the, the Constitution, is that, is that a familiar word? The Bill of Rights? Am I, is, is, does that sound like a foreign language to me at this point? These are just, I guess, silly old useless documents when you're trying to push the country over the edge into full-blown communism. And I just want you to think about it. What, what would you do differently if you were trying to employ full-on communism? What, what, would, what would you do differently right now? And why wouldn't illegals be coming to squat at a community near you? It's basically what they've been doing to our country, right? Coming in and asserting squatters' rights. Uh, I've been here for years now. I have a family and friends. You got to let me stay. Don't change the locks on us, please. We've already been here for over 30 days. Why wouldn't they be exploiting that policy? Borders? What are those? Who cares about borders, whether it be countries or walls or doors to houses or locks on doors? 
Our lawmakers don't even care enough about our own citizens to allow us to protect our homes borders from our own bad guys. Why would they why would they even bother protecting us from foreign national bad guys? So why wouldn't these illegals be coming en masse to push their way into our country and take advantage of the total disregard? Uh, it, it's like, of course they would. Of course they would exploit that policy. Who can expect them to do anything different at that point? And in fact, so speaking of that, when I come back, I want to bring the panel in and I want to show you what is happening at the southern border right now as a swarm of illegal immigrants overtake the Texas National Guard. It is just really, really shocking video. And we'll have that when we return. Welcome to the show. Yaku Buyans, Blaze TV contributor and host of The Bottom Line, along with Chad Jackson, of course, of Malone Pictures. And you can find him on Uncle Tom 2, which I told him I would like to be a part of Uncle Tom 3, being that I am 2% Sub-Saharan African. I heard him say yes. Yeah. Thank you. And that's a verbal. Thank you. It's on the record now, Chad. Yeah, we could put you right there with Carol Swain, our two female voices. I yeah. will say <laughs> I will say this, Chad. I put Sarah One of these on my I put Sarah on my movie. Like the other. <laughs> I put Sarah on my movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, consequently your movie was not about being black. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, so I wanna play this this video for you guys. You know, I was just talking about like these Venezuelans coming over here and being like, hey, turns out you can just ha- engage in swap. Uh, squatters rights and go take over people's homes and uh, why wouldn't they do that borders mean nothing apparently in this country and I want to play for you guys in El Paso so apparently overnight there were like hundreds of illegal immigrants that were pushed back into Mexico by Texas National Guard pushed south of the concertina wire that are that is uh, currently set up but apparently there was a breach in the border fencing and it led to just like this rush by the illegals to take to overtake the National Guard and book it past them over to the border wall where of course they knew that they could claim asylum watch here's some of that chaos <laughs> So for those of you who are listening on audio, they're literally, they're like ripping the fencing away to give them more time. And they keep growing. The crowd keeps growing. National Guard's trying to fight them off. And they just completely overtake them and run right past them over to the wall where they can now try to be processed into the country. <clears throat> that is the state of our southern border in Joe Biden's America. <clears throat> it was interesting. I was reading a, um, I wish that I had it in front of me. There was a poll um, from 2020 that showed how many the, the Americans how, who do you think is going to be better on the border, Joe Biden or Donald Trump? And it was like Biden was up by one point. They were polled again in 2024. Who do you think would be better on the border, Biden or Trump? And I think it was like Trump by almost 30 points. I mean, this is, I, I honestly, I thought that they would have cleaned up their act by now on what, March 21st of 2024, knowing that they have to answer for themselves in November. I would have thought that they would have done more by this point, not because they care, but just for the optics of this. Yeah, but you, but you can't. You know how many trips and how long we've been on the border yeah. since 2020. The genie, when the genie's out the bottle, you can't put him back in. Yeah, and and they cannot. Even with all the corruption, and yes, that's the word I'm using. The corruption with this administration and all the bribery and the pay for play and and the the quasi deal with the Mexican president, they cannot put this back in the bottle. It's out of control because you've got IOM involved, International Office of Migration. You've got the United Nations involved. You've got NGOs that receive billions of dollars in South America and inside the United States of America. The system has, you know, Frankenstein Uh is the master. Yeah. And, And that's the case now. They cannot. Now, I pray 
that this is their downfall. Look, as bad as this is, that this election will actually be a border election, that Americans will understand the significance of this and we can actually restore the equilibrium of the country. Um, so in a way, you know, you, you want to stem the tide, but they cannot fix this, Sarah. They, I'm sure they're trying. They would, are they? What are they doing? Well, they look, they are attempting by hook and crook, by a border bill that's not a border bill. It's really a Ukrainian bill with well, wink, I mean, wink, yeah, a little optics. money in here. That's optics. They're not doing anything. They're not doing anything in that bill to secure the border. No, 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 it's just to, to to bring more processors, more glorified travel agents. Where would you like to go, sir? Let me allow you to do that. And by the way, show up for court in 2032. And I, I just want to paint a picture real quick. Sorry, uh, Chanti. I just want to do this real quick. The reason Texas Guard is pushing back at the Concertina wire is they're trying to push them back into Midway River because mm-hmm. Mid River is where the U.S. territory starts. By the time they pass there, they are allowed in, even by U.S. immigration law. They're landed. Right. They now have due process where American citizens don't get due process. Blaze Reporter doesn't get due process. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Right. But they get due process because they're on American territory, so they can claim asylum. So now they get a notice to appear to go in front of an immigration judge that no longer exists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I mean, it's just it's fascinating to me because to Yaku's point, Chad, um, you would think that anyone with any, I don't know, two brain cells to rub together would go, oh. Well, they're exploiting the asylum process, so we need to strengthen the asylum process. But that doesn't seem to be what the Biden regime wants to do at all. Not at all. And I think what they're doing is they're banking on the fact that there are a lot of people, there are a lot of Americans who genuinely believe that this is a human rights uh, thing going on at the border. And so you have a lot of bleeding heart people who believe that Joe Biden would actually do well to do nothing and and actually let these people in all the more. I'm wondering if the people who actually ended up making it to the fence, whether they were able to successfully claim asylum and, and be let in. I'm sure they did. No, they yeah. come, they get in. Yeah, I can I'm sure tell they you, did. I can tell you firsthand because that's They're already nas- on U.S. soil. That's National Guard. They are absolutely let in. They are not. No National Guard, n- no federal agent, is turning anybody away. Their instructions to let them They're in, and this is first town. Mm-hmm. They're not allowed to. Right. They are. Al- they are coming in, and which, and they know. Think about this. This is not just some random guy that's coming from Guatemala that knows if I get past this this wire. I'm mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. Look at the behavior. They know if I get past, because they're coached. Yeah, they've got it. They're yes. coached got on NGOs the way are, in. Yes. They're completely trained. Yeah, yeah. They've got NGOs that are that are designed to like get all disseminate all of this information out to them in Spanish and all of these other different languages that the, all of these people can read. Because remember, they're not all coming from Mexico. Okay, uh, Ch- you Chinese. I'm Portuguese. sure there's a Chinese. Yeah, a Chinese version as well that's telling them yeah. exactly where to go, what to do, where the safe checkpoints are, what to say, what to say yeah. in order to get in successfully. Well, if there's anything I know about leftist policymakers is they don't do anything without without case studies, without mm-hmm. uh, focus groups and things of this nature, polls, uh, statistical data to figure out what the sentiments of the people are before making a decision, because everything they do is a calculated measure uh, for the next election. And so the fact that I, I do believe it is, to Yaku's point, it, it is going to be uh, an elect or a, uh, an immigration election. Mm-hmm. Um, But I'm curious to see which way it will turn as a result of that. I just have to believe that there are enough. Maybe this is maybe maybe I'm too optimistic on this. I have to believe that there are enough um, on the left who are not so crazy that they just can't see. I mean, it's every every day, multiple stories that I see about uh, the latest illegal immigrant who has murdered someone, who has stabbed someone, who has committed a DUI and killed someone. I who- saw one. Uh, somebody actually shared a TikTok with me of well, I think he was Honduran or something like that. He was on TikTok uh, giving advice on how to squat. On how to invade. Yeah, that's, that's I just played right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just played that. It, it yeah. was it's a Venezuelan. Venezuelan. There a you Venezuelan go. national. Yeah, there you go. Who's coming over here? And by the way, apparently that guy. It's not just that he has an entire TikTok that is dedicated to showing how he is exploiting Americans' policy. He mm-hmm. has a video on how to how to how to um, benefit from U.S. taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how to get money from them, how to stand on a street corner, how much money he gets from Americans, from taxpayers. And you know what he says? I'm allergic to work. <laughs> so I'm just going to get it from uh, U.S. taxpayers instead. I mean, th- this is this is what we talk about. 
when we talk about magnets. I know we like for a while there, you got in trouble. You're not allowed to use the word magnet. I don't know what else it is. It's attracting these people here. A hundred percent. And it's by design. Look, I'll never forget standing in Piedras Negras with our security team. We're looking for children, by the way, anti-trafficking operation. And a local man that cannot speak a lick of English is speaking to me in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. So our interpreter speaks and he says, ask him where all the homeless are. Me. Uh -huh. I said, I don't know. Where's all the homeless? And he laughs. Right. And, and he made really good, true, pure Mexican food that we ate. And he said, we send them to America. Uh -huh. We send all our homeless to America. And he literally explains to me in his, in his way, you are our welfare program. Right. Right. And, and they're coached on the way. They're not coming here to assimilate. We've said this a million times. Want to work hard. Yes, there are Hispanic families historically that come over and work hard and send money back home. That in itself is a problem because you're siphoning off capital from one country and you're sending yeah. it to another. Right, right. This is not even that. Right. Don't want to work. Pride themselves in saying, allergic to work. Yeah. Why would I, why would I work when I can just live off of the American taxpayer? Why, why would I do that? I mean, Joe Biden is, is I am being, I am getting financial benefits. Yeah for coming here the way that I did because right. of Joe Biden. Why would I stop now? Right. And I, I just, I see all of these headlines though every day. And by the way, that guy has like, uh, I think a half a million followers on right. TikTok. Of course he does. So this is, this is popular now yeah. to, to, to put out that type the of culture content. culture is so sick. I know, but it's like, you, I have to believe that there are enough of these headlines that people are seeing every single day. People, Americans being sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. killed, uh, hurt, the, the violent crime that these people are committing. Because again, to your point, they don't want to assimilate. I don't know how much it's going to take for Americans to understand even the bleeding heart liberals like you're talking about, Chad. These people are not coming here to assimilate. They're coming here to take for the most part. Right. Sure, there are outliers as, as you're talking about. Yes, there are outliers. But these people are not coming here for the American dream the way that you see it. But it's inverted. The outliers used to be the criminal faction, yes, right? Yes. The outliers used to be those who weren't coming here to make their families' lives mm. better or work really hard or have an opportunity. Now the outlier is the one who wants to do it right. 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 It, it's, the, it's predominantly because, look, the Komodo was opened and they all have an uncle called Joe. And it's, you know, weekend at Bernie's. You yeah. know, here we go. I mean, 100%. just pretend. I mean, the polling shows that people know that Trump is stronger on the border. The question will be, is that enough to drive people who, for all other issues, maybe hold their noses up at Donald Trump? Yeah. Plug their noses. But what, what, like at this point, what is more important? Orange man bad or securing our nation's border? And by the way, mass deportation of all of the people who came here. Well, perhaps that's a non-factor for the policymakers. Perhaps they know full well that the polls are in Trump's favor. Perhaps they did a cost-benefit analysis where they have resolved that the number of people who are illegal, who they now have the ability to vote, and other things that they plan on doing, uh, pushing toward November, uh, trumps the idea of people voting for Trump. Um, I could go on, but it's making no, me I, I No, I like where you're going. I, was, I just came last night. I just came off a trip with a couple very high-profile guys that we went on a trip together, a business trip, and two very prominent black pastors, amazing guys, African-American pastors in the group. And we had this conversation about compensating for the lost black vote uh -huh. mm -hmm. by bringing in people from other countries because the, 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 there is an African-American mm -hmm. exodus. Mm -hmm. And this is a Hispanic community yeah. as well. And, and, uh, absolutely. And they, they've got to compensate for that. And they are doing all they can to compensate for it. And, and I, I can't help it but think, look, relying on the Gen Z voters, whew, that's tough. I mean, that's the 500,000 followers of like I'm allergic to work. So I'm, I'm thinking you got to go get your grandmas and grandpas and you got to wheelchair them and bus them to the polls. But we're going to need all the baby boomers to wake up, all you baby boomers who haven't voted since who knows when. And you're going to have to show up. This time, you're going to have to show up. And, and I always, I'm always going to be most critical of my own people, the conservative Christians, to say, where are you? Because we know 60% of conservative Christians, the Christian faction, didn't vote right. in the last election. So you can't complain mm -hmm. if you're not playing. Right. right. And, and, and again, I understand people have issues with Donald Trump, but like, 
are those issues more important than making sure that we get Joe Biden out of office so that we can actually have a chance to secure our border? Because 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 here's the thing. Joe Biden's not going to do it. There's there's zero percent chance that he does it. So even if you want to say, well, I'm not sure that Donald Trump's going to do it. Well, there's zero percent chance that Joe Biden will. So do you want to take that risk or would you like to just show up, hold your nose if you have to and vote to get this guy out of office? It just really is that simple to me. And I don't understand the people who make it so complicated. I I just I genuinely I don't get it. And it's bigger than it, this is a fight for a nation's future. Yes. Honestly, it's a fight for our survival as a nation. And I'm not even there's no hyperbole there. No. That is yeah. that is straight up. We are we are at the brink of if they could if they get another four years, they will start chipping away at constitutional rights like you cannot believe it. Yeah. Left, right and center. Well, they will censor. They will. Man, you will lose rights yeah. faster than you can blink. Yeah. And to, Chad, to your point, um, if we do not have some sort of mass deportation, um, perhaps you could argue, well, illegals aren't allowed to vote in federal elections um, right now. OK, well, you get these people in the next census completely shifts everything, yeah. everything and they pick up more seats. And then it's like, well, then where do you go? Yeah. And that's what I mean when I say cross benefit analysis. I mean. These people, again, they move in a very strategic yeah. way. And I just seriously doubt that they see the polls going in favor of Trump and that they would continue to do the, the same thing over and over again, which is causing them to lose this, this way only to give it to Trump or to give it to Republicans in the future, even past Trump. They're, they're, they're gearing towards something. I just wonder where that something is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, I want to talk to you guys about Joe Biden's plan to eliminate uh, gas powered vehicles from the market. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Preborn. So Preborn is an amazing, amazing ministry that I am really proud to partner with because what they do is um, they empower young expectant mothers in crisis to choose life. They have rescued hundreds of thousands of babies' lives through an ultrasound. So when a woman considering abortion visits a preborn center, she actually gets to, she's not fed lies like she is if she goes to a Planned Parenthood and they're like, oh, don't worry, it's just a clump of cells. It'll be fine. And by the way, you won't have any regrets later on down the road. They are sold lies at Planned Parenthood. But what they do over at Preborn's network of clinics is they, it's very simple. They're shown the truth. They get to hear their baby's heartbeat and they get to see their own baby on ultrasound. And it is life changing. Those of you who are parents, you know this. The moment that you see your child on ultrasound and you hear the heartbeat is a life changing moment for you, especially your first one. And the majority of the time, once the woman is shown the truth, she will choose life for her baby. I'm just so proud to partner with Preborn. And um, look, I would just ask Preborn over the past 15 years, Preborn centers have counseled over 450,000 women considering abortion. And over 200,000 babies have been saved. Um, those are amazing, amazing numbers. And I would ask you guys, help them out over at Preborn, all right? Um, $28 is the cost to sponsor an ultrasound. So how many ultrasounds can you sponsor to help rescue babies' lives? You can go to preborn.com slash Sarah to donate securely. That is preborn.com slash Sarah. So just last month, the Biden regime claimed that they were going to back off of its push to force consumers to only purchase electric vehicles. I think probably because of the backlash or just like, that's crazy. Like, you can't do that. That's insane. Well, of course, you would expect that they'd be like, embrace the total insanity because yesterday they issued a new directive designed to ensure the majority of passenger cars and light trucks sold in the United States are either all electric or a hybrid by 2032 by enacting a regulation that will limit the amount of pollution allowed from a tailpipe. So they want 56% all electric cars, 16% hybrids, and currently electric vehicles make up 7.6% of total uh, U.S. car sales. So, um, which, by the way, mostly is because people don't want them. 
<laughs> they don't want them. There are so many of these electric vehicles that have the 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 projects have just gone under because no one wants to buy them. So here I want to read you Biden's statement here. Three years ago, I set an ambitious target that half of all new cars and trucks sold in 2030 would be zero emission. Together, we've made historic progress. Hundreds of new expanded factories across the country, hundreds of billions in private investment and thousands of good paying union jobs. And we'll meet my goal for 2030 and race forward in the year. Years ahead. Now, he does mean race, okay, because they are pushing to finalize this as quickly as possible. Um, according to a statute, as long as the rule is published more than 60 days before the end of his term, it cannot be eliminated by a majority vote in Congress. Are you guys really excited about uh, forcing you to not use gas powered cars? I am. Well, think about all the money you'll save on gas, though, guys. That's what they're saying. You're going to save you, all that money at the pump that you're so upset about spending every time you go there and you're like filling up your car and you're like, thanks, Joe. You won't have to spend that anymore. Don't worry. There won't be any extra costs associated with uh, the electric cars either. Don't mm -mm, don't worry about that. No, what this is, is yet another step in this kind of incremental uh, quest to automate everything, um, which is part and parcel of the WEF and Bill Gates and all these other guys and what they want to do. Uh, people forget that Bill Gates himself said that, you know, we want to complete, you know, people think that all the white collar jobs are going the way of automation, but we're doing the same thing with blue collar jobs as well. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at blue collar jobs, what are these? They're the trades, auto mechanics, is that in a third. When you can um, completely change the uh, infrastructure where the, the roads are no longer crawling with gas-powered vehicles and all crawling with electric vehicles, you can uh, you can essentially uh, do away with a lot of jobs that are held by mechanics who require a degree of expertise and knowledge and skill to get under the hood and to fix the engine. Um, if everything can be done by a robot, um, because all the engines look the same because these are all electrical vehicles. They're doing the same thing with the building traits, so on and so forth. Again, not to make it all complex and heady, but this is once again an incremental step toward this quest to, uh, to build a kind of technological communistic utopia. Yeah. And this is what we're a part of. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Let me, I want to read yeah, you, uh, I want to read you, a, I, I love this quote from uh, Republican Senate candidate Dave McCormick. He said, Biden's extreme climate agenda will crush America's auto industry and its hard workers while making us more dependent on China. Mm -hmm. The irony of it all, Biden will increase global emissions by restricting natural gas exports and sourcing lithium needed for batteries from China's mines. That's right. That's right. Because China plays the long game and this mm -hmm. current government is tied to China. That's why China has literally raped the continent of Africa of mineral resources uh -huh. and lithium. Yeah. They've bought the futures of lithium in Zimbabwe into 2080 underground. So, yeah, we will be beholden to China, but that's Joe Biden's best friend. Uh, but because Biden can only work three hours a day, Sarah, he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't have the ability to call the GMs of these companies who are dumping. Right. EVs, 94,000 EVs currently in, in car graveyards, unsold brand new vehicles, right. right? Tesla stock has dropped, Tesla's overall value has dropped $70 billion, all right? The EV stock overall as a market sector has dropped 90%, right? It's done. It's over. EVs are over. Mm -hmm. He can write on a piece of paper and make some like declaration. It is done. Ford is jumping ship. They're retooling and saying this is not going to work. GM is jumping ship. All of them are jumping ship. So he can wave a three-hour wand every day mm -hmm. and say he's going to do it. It's not because the demand is not there. Right. And supply meets demand. And at some point, the car companies are just going to say, "Hey, listen, you as a president are burning our cash now." Right. Right. It's not happening. Um, well, you know, we talk about, you know, Joe Biden's going to save the planet by eliminating electric vehicles and, you know, combating racism somehow by injecting twenty five million dollars into a poor Brooklyn neighborhood. You're never going to guess what it's for. Watch. Joe Biden's giving this neighborhood twenty five million dollars. Ah! Oh! Twenty five million dollars. Wow. What the hell? Are you serious? 
USA, USA. What do you think it should be spent on? The schools, the parks. The illegal immigration problem. Fresh fruits, uh, vegetables. This is life. That elevator over there, broken. These houses, dirty. Recreation for the kids to get out the street. Well, sorry, he's spending it all so you could charge your electric scooter. Get the f out of here, Joe. <laughs> I don't like that. That's ghetto. What's... Mm. He's spending it on charges? Man, they need to charge his brain. They had to take the top of my head off a couple times. <laughs> See if I had a brain. Mm -hmm. Do you own an electric scooter? No, and I don't want it. Scooter's not keeping me warm. Scooter is barely taking me places. Scooter? I need some money. That's about my pay grade. Though Biden says once he installs these charges for electric scooters, there will be less racism. <coughs> How does that equal less racism. Come on, you're kidding me. There's no racism here. There's actually more racism that he's doing this because it's really not helping the community. I don't see the correlation, but I also don't see the correlation between Joe Biden and being president. I don't know who put that mother in office, but it wasn't me. So you don't <laughs> like him? Yeah. What would you rather, cheaper gas or electric scooter chargers? Cheaper gas. Why wouldn't we want cheaper gas? Like, what would the, how would the scooters benefit? We don't deliver. We can't really have cheap Cheaper gas because they're trying to get more money out of you to build electric cars. Cheaper gas, mm -hmm. definitely, because my man drives. Uh, look at that. How's Joe Biden doing? He's too old. Sorry. But everybody elected him, so that's your book. He's sitting there lying to it. To people. He's the worst president that we ever had. Joe Biden, please go True. back to Delaware because New York City, you have no idea what we need. He's a slimy mother. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he take you out to lunch and stick a fork <laughs> up your ass right after. Oh, oh. I don't think Who do you want like to win the 2024 much. election? Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Donald Trump. I want Donald Trump. This Trump. Is the greatest Trump. Clip that happens played. to be me in case you forget. <laughs> when he was in, it was no crime. Crime was down. Uncle Donald. No okay. cap. That's a nice guy. Trump is straight up and down, like six o'clock. Um, at least I know what, he, what I get when it comes to him. I was Amen. more comfortable with Donald Trump in office. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. And you ain't black. Trump, that's right, I said it. That's right, I said it. What do you like about Donald Trump? He don't bull He don't care. Like, you know, I like that. Trump was giving back people money. He was, I ain't go front, he almost started a war with Kim Jong-un, too, before he died. Kim Jong-un is alive, by the way. He's alive. Oh, so you faked the oven. He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! We're gonna be on Jesse Waters Primetime. What do you want to tell Jesse? Tune in to Jesse Primetime. Good job. You got these guys in the hood making me famous. Let's get rid of Joe Biden. So, um, <coughs> Chad. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how I want I want you to know mm -hmm. Joe Biden is your guy because he is combating racism yeah, by yeah. Uh, bringing more electric charging <laughs> stations for scooters. What a Saved. mess. Yeah. I mean, how come no one came up with the solution earlier? <laughs> um, we just solved racism. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. That would don't agree. You're not black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. I actually had mixed feelings watching that segment um, because the whole twenty five million dollars coming to the city. What should we do with it? Well, we should do this and we should end this and we should end poverty and this that, and the third. And um, as a kind of free market capitalist absolutist, <laughs> um, it's interesting when you know not to switch the subject, but. You know, it's interesting when you look at the mass numbers of people who are leaving the Democrat pe party yeah. and are now, you know, pulling the lever for Trump, a lot of black folks um, who are upset that illegal immigrants are coming and they're taking, food, you know, welfare and food stamps and all these different things. It's a kind of battle over, you know, well, we want to be taken care of, but these other people are be t being taken care of. And so it's not an exact, it's not exactly a conservative reason to come over to Trump. But I guess the Republican Party can take its W's where it, where it can get right, it. Right. Um, but yeah, when I look at that and, and how uh, Biden is trying to pour all this money into the electric vehicles and the chargers and 
and things of this nature. Once again, it's this kind of incremental quest toward a technological utopia that they're trying to build. It's like, um, I know we got to go to break here, but it's like, you know, in Mean Girls and they're like, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's like, Joe, stop, stop trying, stop trying (laughs) to make this happen. We don't want it. We don't want it. Stop. Um, All right. We got to go to a a break here, but we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So Patriot Mobile, Yaku knows this. They are like, on the front lines, leading the charge in trying to not just promote conservative values, not just help protect your free speech and your gun rights and everything else. They are like at the border with this man. Yes. Helping. Patriot Mobile have literally helped us rescue children, save lives, uh, and then flip school boards, do a lot of, but they really invest in children, in the lives of children, making children's lives safer. So our team is Patriot Mobile team. Yeah. My phone's a Patriot Mobile phone. Glenn and the team there are, are uh, champions. They're amazing. They're conservative rock stars. They're putting their money where their mouths are, truly. And when you switch, if you're with Big Mobile, when you switch to Patriot Mobile, not only are you sending the message that you support all of these values, they're actually, this is, they're taking a portion of your bill and this is what they're doing with your bill. So you're not going to be going to, you know, Verizon or wherever, and then they take a portion of your bill and spend it on donating to Planned Parenthood. No, they're going to use that and they are going to go to the border to help rescue uh, trafficking victims. They're going to go, you know, flip school boards to make sure that your children can't see all of this explicit literature. I mean, they truly are leaders in this fight. So Go to their website. I know they've got they've got so many flexible plans. You can find a plan for you. They have all three networks that are available. It's, they all share the same towers now. So you're going to get the same coverage uh, without funding the left. You can go to patriotmobile.com slash Sarah. Uh, use promo code uh, Sarah to get free activation. That is patriotmobile.com slash Sarah. All right. So uh, Donald Trump's case in New York, where the judge found Trump guilty of fraud, which was total BS, ordered him to pay four hundred and fifty four million dollars for manipulating his net worth. Uh, And nearly one hundred million of this is interest and at a rate of one hundred and twelve thousand dollars per day. Well, apparently uh, Attorney General Letitia James, who is, of course, behind this witch hunt, this particular witch hunt, not all of the other ones, is preparing to seize one of Trump's golf courses and private estates, according to uh, Colin Rugg via CNN on Twitter. He said the New York Attorney General's office has filed judgments in Westchester County, signaling that James plans on taking Trump's private estate and golf course known as Seven Springs. Trump has now four days to satisfy the judgment or sway an appeals court to allow him to post a smaller amount, which obviously is was like the plan because. Look, I wish that I had as much money as Trump, but like uh, what I do, I don't. But what I do know is that that's obviously not all liquid. It's all tied up in, you know, different assets. And so to ask him to provide that much money all at once, clearly he cannot do. And now we see um, what their plan is, is to seize all of his properties. Yeah, this thing is going to be, look, they want to hurt the man and cripple the man any way they can. And and the fact of the matter is, no matter what you're going to do to this guy, he's going to stand. He's going to fight. I mean, this is a principled, convicted human being who who's not, I mean, they should get the memo. He's not going to leave. Right. But this is a frivolous suit because you got O'Leary and big investors in New York pulling out saying, this is, this is how we do business around the world. Mm-hmm. A bank assesses, and they did. The bank approves. The bank yeah. gets paid back. There was no victim. The bank There's was zero not upset. victim. The bank approves it. Right. They do the assessment. They come, and if you don't agree, they say, listen, yep. we value it at X. You at Y. We settle at this. We loan 80% of the money. Right. Normally, it's an 80% construction loan, 20% down. This is business around the world in every single city. This is such a bad precedent. Uh-huh. Th- this may be one of the number one faux pas in New York's history to hurt that city. It's going to hurt that city long term. I don't know how he gets out of it right now in this in this moment. You know, he's sort of a martyr for this movement, but because I think other developers will stand behind him even on the left they are standing behind him. They're saying this is not right. Yeah. But I don't know how he gets out of it right this minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you look at New York and when you look at Georgia, I mean, it's interesting I mean, this is very clearly a witch hunt after Trump. And when you look at the fact that we have a two-tier system, it begs the question, like, where does this leave Trump? Because here's someone who, for all intents and purposes, uh, he's definitely not a part of the establishment, but he 
is a politician by virtue of the fact that he is president, and he's a he's a businessman who operates at, at the top tier. So where does this leave him? Because traditionally, aren't people like Trump uh, considered a part of that first tier as and far as protected. our justice system is concerned? Protected, mm-hmm. yes. So it does make you wonder. Yeah, I just you know for all of his flaws, and of course he has them, and I've hit him on those. But it's like I just. Y- y- I feel so much sympathy for the guy mm-hmm. that he's having his entire life through. I mean, think about the personal hits that he's going to take and has taken and is currently taking right now, all because he is running against Joe Biden. I mean, yeah. that's that's right. Like at the end of the day, that's when all of this stuff started happening. It, they would not have done this no. if he had decided not to run all because he decided to run against Joe Biden and just the the hits that this guy has taken personally in his personal life that has affected his personal life is just so angering to me. But the legal matter started before Biden, though. I mean, as far as being impeached. And, well, right. Yeah. And, and this is, I think, a continuation of it. Well, I that was to remove him. But once Biden was in the White House, they were going to leave they him They were going to go away. They were going to leave him alone. They are going to leave the family alone. But then he did what, what was right, fight for the country. That and he's true. fighting for mm-hmm. the country. But the thing here is what people don't consider. There's partners in these deals. It's not just Donald Trump. And so here, this was a gross Overreach. I mean, that is an understatement, you know, of the day, mm-hmm. because they're they're reaching into the pockets of their own kind at this point, and they they're breaking the mold. What you're pointing to is he should be the protected class, mm-hmm. the elite, and now he's not, and it's making these other guys go, well, wait a minute, when do they come after me? Right. Right. right exactly. 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 Yeah. So the state of New York City, um, they're they're bogus lawsuits that they could wage against any businessman in or woman in New York. Uh, oh, and also you don't actually own your home because a squatter can come in at any time. And in 30 days, they can actually have more rights to your property than you do. So I would just say get the hell out of New York City if right. you can. All right. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. So I don't know if you guys have heard Planet Fitness is uh, in the headlines now because an 80 year old woman uh, reported that there was a man using the women's restroom at the facility and Planet Fitness uh, banned the 80 year old woman from attending their facility. Now, uh, what has just been unearthed, I believe this was libs of TikTok, was an actual this guys. This is an actual Planet Fitness commercial. Watch our tour with the locker rooms. After you. No, no, after you. Okay. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Had a tickle in my throat. I don't know which one you're supposed to use. Dum 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 cool. What? What's confused? Yeah. I mean. I Shut have the no whole thing down. Shut down Planet Fitness. We don't need it. Yeah. Thank there's, you. There's Go buy free weights. Work out at home. Right. Go run. Shut down Planet Fitness. There's don't far better it. gyms. There's far better gyms. And this isn't the first time that's happened. That's happened in num- on numerous occasions with I'm, Planet Fitness. Yeah. I'm just still very disturbed and confused. I <laughs> <laughs> mean, She-Man didn't do it for you? No, no. No. I think at that point you're supposed to stop working out. <laughs> <laughs> 